Welcome to lecture 9.2. We're going to be looking at the multiplication principle, um, permutations and combination, combinations as it applies to probability. So let's begin with a simple example. If there are three roads from A to B, from town A to town B, and two roads from town B to town C, in how many ways can someone travel from A to C by way of B. We can solve this simple problem with the help of a figure, 9.5, which lists all the possible ways to go from A to C. The possible ways to go from A to B, A through B to C, are A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, and C2. So there are six possible ways. Note that six is the product of three times two. Three is the number of ways to go from A to B, and two is the number of ways to go from B to C. Here's a tree chart that's another way of demonstrating it. And we can see that there are six routes that you can follow. <clears throat> This example is an illustration of the multiplication principle. The multiplication principle. Suppose n choices must be made with m sub 1 ways to make choice 1, m sub 2 ways to make choice 2, etc., all the way down to m sub n ways to make choice n. Then there are m sub 1 times m sub 2, etc., times m sub n, different ways to make the entire sequence of choices. So this is just saying when you have multiple choices, the number of different possible choices is um, the product of all the individual choices you make along the route, so to speak. So let's look at some examples to make this um, a little bit more clear. Suppose Angela has nine skirts, eight blouses, and 13 different pairs of shoes. If she is willing to wear any combination, which we know, of course, that's not true, how many different skirt, blouse, shoe choices does she have? This is a simple problem. She can choose nine skirts. She has eight choices for blouses and 13 choices for pairs of shoes. So she has 936 different possible outfits. Now, gentlemen, I would not try arguing that when you're trying to get closet space about the number of possible outfits there are because we know that that won't work. In May 2013, there were 731 sink faucets, 543 bath vanities, and 607 medicine cabinets available to order at the Home Depot website. How many different ways could you buy one sink, bath vanity, and medicine cabinet combo? Again, a very simple uh, problem to illustrate the multiplication principle. 731 sinks times 543 bath vanities times 607 uh, medicine cabinets gives us 240 million different combinations. It's amazing, isn't it? These, the, the number of choices that you have, it really makes um, the number of overall choices go up really fast. Let's look at something a little more complicated. A combination lock can be set to any three letter sequences. Okay, so you're choosing three letters. So how many choices do you have for the first letter? Well, we're assuming this is the American or English alphabet, so there are 26 letters in the alphabet. So I can pick 26 for the first letter. It says I can pick any three letters, so I can pick 26 for the second and 26 for the third. So I have uh, um, over 17,000 different sequences. Now the second one is a little bit more complicated, part B here. How many sequences are possible if no letter is repeated? Well, we're still going to use the multiplication principle. For the first letter we choose, we have 26 choices. But if we don't want a letter to be repeated, 
then when we choose the second letter, we only have 25 letters left because we've already picked one. And when we pick for the third letter, um, we only have 24 letters left because again, we picked um, one for the first and one for the second. So in this case, if we don't want to repeat a letter, um, we only have 15,600 different choices. We're going to look at something called factorial not notation. The use of the multiplication principle often leads to products such as 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So um, this is multiplying from a starting point all the way down to 1 using whole numbers the product of all natural numbers from 5 down to 1. If n is a natural number, the symbol n um, exclamation point, which is actually read n factorial, see it here, I'm circula circula cir circling it, sorry guys, read n factorial, denotes the product of all the natural numbers from n down to 1. So 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. The factorial is an algebraic shorthand. For, extent, for example, instead of writing 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, we simply write 5 exclamation point or 5 factorial. If n equals 1, this formula is understand to give 1 factorial, which equals 1. For any number, natural number, n factorial, we get n factorial equals n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 dot 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 down to three two one so we go all the way down to one in all of these notice also and this is really important by definition by definition zero factorial is equal to one and i'm not sure why that was defined that way that'd be a good question also note that six factorial which equals six times five times four times three times two times one is the same as 6 times 5 factorial, okay? Similarly, the definition of n factorial shows that n equals n times n minus 1 factorial. So this is just saying we can break it down into smaller groups by taking another one. Now, why do we want to do that? Let's look at an example. If we tried to solve this first problem by writing all of the multiples out, 100 times 99 times 98 all the way down to 1, divided by 98 times 97, 96, 95, etc., all the way down to 1, that would take up a lot of paper. But using what we just learned about the factorial, we know that 100 factorial equals 100 times 99 factorial. 99 factorial equals 99 times 98 factorial. And now we can see that the 98 factorials cancel, leaving us just with 100 um, times 99. <coughs> Excuse me. So see if you can do example number five. Hit pause, try to do this problem. It's a simple problem, it shouldn't take you too long. And then check the answer. So in the numerator, we have five times four times three factorial. So that can cancel out, and we're left with 5 times 4 over 2 factorial. 5 times 4 factorial, 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. The 3 factorials cancel out, and we're left with 2 factorial, which is just 2 times 1. And we're left with 5 times 4, and so we get an answer of 10. A permutation of a set of elements is an ordering of the elements. For example, there are six permutations, orderings, of the letters A, B, and C, namely ABC, ACB, BAC, BCA, CAB, and CBA. These are all just different orderings of those three letters. As this listing shows, order counts when determining the number of, of a set of elements. By saying order counts, we mean that the event ABC is indeed distinct from CBA or any other ordering of the three letters. We can use the multiplication principle to determine the number of possible permutations of any set. An example here to understand why order would count. Let's imagine that we're going to have, we're going to order the numbers one, two, three. 
and that each ordering denotes a specific number. So 1, 2, 3 would equal 123, where 3, 2, 1 would equal 321, which are very different numbers. Okay? How many batting orders are possible for a nine person baseball team? There are nine possible choices for the first batter, eight possible choices for the second, seven for the third, and so on down to the eighth batter, two possible choices, and the ninth batter, one possibility. So the total number of batting orders is nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one which is over 362,000 different orders. I bet most baseball coaches don't even realize that. In other words, the number of permutations of a nine-person set is nine factorial. So you can use the factorial to help you find permutations. The number of permutations of an n element set is n factorial. Up here we had six, uh, three, excuse me, three factorial. 3 times 2 times 1 gave us six different ways to organize those three letters. A teacher has five books and wants to display three of them side by side on her desk. How many arrangements of three books are possible? Now this gets a little more complicated because now we have two, um, two kind of sequences here. We have five books, but we only want to use three of them. So it's not how many different ways can we arrange five books, which would be five factorial, but if based on those five books, how many ways can we arrange three of the five? Um, five times four times three equals 60 possible arrangements, okay? In this example, we say that the possible arrangements are the permutations of five things taken three at a time. And we denote the number of such permutations by um, little five, capital P, little three. In other words, um, five P three equals 60, or the permutation, the permutation, that's the P, of five things taken three at a time equals 60. More generally, an ordering of R elements from a set of N elements is called a permutation of N things taken R at a time. And the number of such permutation is denoted NPR, not to be confused with National Public Radio. To see how to compute this number, look at the answer in example five, which can be expressed like this. <clears throat> so we have five things taken three at a time, which gives us five times four times three. Well, notice this is five factorial over two factorial, because the two and the one disappeared. And so what we do is we, it, this is kind of our base of our formula, five factorial over five minus three factorial, which are the two elements um, that we're looking at, five things taken three at a time. So the difference between those. So this gives us our actual formula for a permutation, um, where if, NPR, where R is less than or equal to N, is the number of permutation of N elements taken R at a time, then NPR equals N factorial over N minus R factorial. Make sure that's in a parenthesis too. Now, the good news is <clears throat> your calculator has a permutation button. If you, use the, um, if you use your calculator and go to the math function, which is on the left column about four buttons down, you'll get a whole bunch of different functions. And you'll notice across the top menus, math, number, complex numbers, and then prob for probability. If you go over to probability, you'll notice the second item in your list is NPR. So you can go ahead and use your calculator to calculate these permutations. You don't have to know this formula or to use the formula. You may indeed use your calculator for these. So let's try one. Um, Early in 2012, seven candidates sought the Republican nomination for president at the Iowa caucus. In a poll, how many ways could voters rank their first, second, and third choices? So notice here we've got seven candidates taken three at a time. All right. So see if you can do this. Try it in your calculator if you would. Again, it's on the math button. Go over to probability along the top menu and then you'll see um, the NPR on item number two. 
So we should get 7 factorial over 4 factorial. You'll also notice, if you, you might also notice in that in your calculator, there's also a factorial button um, number 4 under that probability menu. Okay, so you could actually do 7 factorial divided by 4 factorial, but it certainly makes more sense to me to go ahead and get practice at using this permutation calc function. All right, so there's 210 ways to um, rank um, the nominees, 1, 2, and 3. All right, we've been at this now about 15 minutes. This is a good time to take a little pause. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I, I put up one of my favorite quotes. If you think dangerous, excuse me, if you think adventure is dangerous, try routine, it's lethal. Um, and another one, it takes nothing to join the crowd, it takes everything to stand alone. And I really encourage you to find your own path, um, to find what makes you happy, what, what you're passionate about, what is your work in the world, what are things that you enjoy. Um, when my oldest son was five, I remember one night after tucking him into bed, um, I told him, you know, that everyone has a purpose in the world and that you will find that purpose by paying attention to what you really enjoy and what you're really good at. Funny thing is, a couple days later, he approached me and said, I know what my purpose is. And with this son, I actually thought it was going to be something real, but he was only five. And I said, really, what is it? And he said, a trampoline for the backyard. It's what he really enjoyed doing and what he was really good at. So we had some more work to do. But, um, you know, find your place in the world. Don't follow everyone else. Um, there are two things that stand out in my mind. The, about the first quote, um, Paul, Paulo Coelho is one of my favorite authors. And um, I read a book uh, that he wrote about this pilgrimage across, literally walking across Spain. And in my mind, I had this in my idea to do this um, on my bucket list, you know, before I died. And um, when I was moving back from Germany to the U.S., um, and I didn't have a job in the U.S. when I was moving back, I decided to go ahead and do it. And that was one of the, the greatest experiences, walking across a country, taking a month. Um, it sounds much more difficult than it was, but it was a great adventure. And it made me realize that there is plenty of adventure left in the world. Um, we just have to kind of find it and, and take a leap of faith. Um, when I was 16, I um, sold my car um, so that I could buy a plane ticket um, and join an exchange program to go and live with a French family. And all of my peers thought I was absolutely crazy. They could not imagine why I would um, sell my car. Obviously, it wasn't a very good car anyway, if I, it only was worth a plane ticket. But um, the, the plane ticket was 400 and my car sold for 600 But I really attribute that choice, that walking in a different direction um, than my peers, as being one of the biggest um, and most powerful choices I made in my life. It eventually took me back to Europe to work. Um, it gave me um, a sense that I had more courage than I really thought I did at 16. And I don't even think I realized that at the time, but reflecting back later, I did. And so it, it, it definitely has shaped me in many different ways by stepping off of the beaten path. All right. So go ahead and take a pause. Hit pause here. Get up, get a drink, go to the bathroom, do a little dance, whatever. Just shake it off and we'll continue on when you're ready. All right. Let's continue with permutations. In a college admissions forum, five female and four male sophomore panelists discuss their college experiences with high school seniors. In how many ways can the panelists be seated in a row of nine chairs? Okay, so this, again, we can see that these problems are getting a little more complex. So it's not just about putting them into your calculator. You have to think about what the problem is asking you. So we really have five females that we can arrange some way, and then we have four females that we can arrange, or excuse me, four males that we can arrange some way. <clears throat> so really what we're just saying is we have nine different people that we want to put in nine different chairs. So this is simply nine factorial, okay? We're taking all nine people and we're using all of them. So it's nine things taken nine at a time. Notice if you do that in the 
permutation, you're just getting 9 factorial. Okay? And maybe that's why 0 factorial equals 1, so that this is not undefined. Now it gets a little more complicated. In how many ways can the panelists be seated if the males and females are to be alternated? Hmm. <clears throat> well, this is actually a little bit of a trick question. We can use the multiplication principle. So, but the trick here is that we have to start with women. Because if we start with males, and we will get male, female, male, female, male, female, male, female, female. Because there are more females than males, we have to start with a female so that we don't end up with two females next to each other, because this is what the question says. So there's five females to put in the first chair. In the second chair has to be a male, and there's four males. Since we've already picked one female, now there's four females. Since we already picked one male, there's three males, then three females, then two males, two females, one male, one female. And so um, this is kind of what I call the hangman approach. And this can often help you kind of think through the problem. So I have nine seats and I put nine slash marks, you know, along there, and then I can figure out, well, how many ways can I pick the first seat or slash mark and how many ways can I pick the second one but this one also like I said called for some special thinking because there were more females than males and we wanted them to alternate we had to start with a female otherwise there would be two females together in how many ways can the panelists be seated if the five males must sit together and the females sit together <clears throat> Well, here we have the 5 factorial and the 4 factorial because that's the different ways to, to put each of those in a group, right? We can put five things taken five at a time gives us 5 factorial. Four, thing, four men taken four at a time gives us four different ways or four factorial different ways to, to um, arrange them. But why this two at the front? Because in this case, we could start with the women at the front or the men at the front. And so we have two different options of each of those groupings. All right. In example eight, we found that there are 60 ways a teacher can arrange three of five different books on a desk. That is, there are 60 permutation of five things taken three at a time. Suppose now that the teacher does not wish to arrange the books on her desk, but wishes to choose at random any three of the five books to give to a book sale to raise money for her school. In how many ways can she do this? At first glance, we might say 60 again, but that is incorrect. The number 60 counts all possible arrangements of three books chosen from five. However, the following arrangements, for example, would all lead to the same three books being given to the book sale. Mystery, biography, textbook, mystery, textbook, biography, biography, etc. Okay. A subset of items selected without regard to order is called a combination. Okay. <clears throat> is called a combination. So order is important in a combination. Order is not important in a combination. I'm sorry, order is important in a permutation, all right? Combinations, order doesn't matter because we have the same grouping. I'm donating three books to give to a book sale. Doesn't matter the order I put them in, I'm still donating the same three books. If I'm displaying them on a shelf, then it does matter a little bit because it's a different display if I put the mystery book first and then or the biography book first, okay? It's just a different display. A subset of items selected without regard to order is called a combination. The number of combination of five things taken three at a time is written as 5C3. Since they are subsets, combinations are not ordered. To evaluate <clears throat> 5C3, 
or the combination of five things taken three at a time, start with the five for three permutations of five things taken three at a time. Combinations are unordered, therefore we, we find the number of combinations by dividing the number of permutations by the number of ways each group of three can be ordered, and that is three factorial. So we get five times four times three over three factorial. There are 10 ways that the teacher can choose three books at random for the book sale. Here's the formula for the combination, the number of combination of n elements taken r at a time when r is less than or equal to n is ncr equals n factorial divided by n minus r factorial times r factorial. Okay. Again, your calculator on the math button under the probability menu has a combination function. So you may feel free to use that. You don't need to use the formula. From a group of 10 students, a committee is to be chosen to meet with the dean. How many different three person committees are possible? Now, is this a permutation or a combination? If I select Bob, Jean, and Rob for a committee, <clears throat> Is that a different committee than if I select Rob, Bob, and Jean? I hope I said the same names. Of course, the order that I select the three people doesn't make a different committee. So order doesn't matter. This is a combination problem. So uh, try this in your calculator and see if you can indeed get 120, the combination of 10 things taken three at a time. In how many ways can a 12-person jury be chosen from a pool of 40 people? This is the combination. Again, any 12 people can be put in any order and they're just still same, they're still the same jury. So we here we have a combination of 40 things taken 12 at a time, and we get 5 billion 586 million different combinations. Amazing, isn't it? It's hard to believe that there are that many different jury possibilities. Um, with using just 40 people 12 at a time. Three managers are selected from a group of 30 to work on a special project. In how many ways can the managers be selected? So again, we have 30 people <clears throat> and we're selecting three of them and we get 44,060. Again, it's a good idea when you're when you I'm doing these to go ahead and stop any of these examples to hit pause and try it on your calculator. <clears throat> in how many ways can the group of three be selected if a certain manager must work on the project? Well, notice if we picked a certain manager out of the 30, let's say Bob, well, that's a, a for sure answer, and now we have two more slots. Well, we have two more slots, but now we're only choosing out of 29 people because we've already selected Bob as the certain manager, okay? So we have one times the combination of 29 things taken two at a time or 406 different possible committees. The formulas for permutation and combinations given in this section will be very useful in solving probability problems. Any difficulty in using these formulas usually comes from being unable to differentiate among them. Both permutations and combinations give the number of ways to choose R objects from a set of N objects. The differences between permutations and combinations are outlined in the following summary. So permutations, different orderings or arrangements have a different meaning. So the clue words to look for is that arrangement or a schedule or an order. Those are some clue words that this is a permutation. And the thing to remember is that order matters. The digits one, two, three does not mean the same thing as the digits three, two, one, right? Otherwise you'd be happy with your paycheck being in the amount of 123 versus 321, which I certainly wouldn't. Combinations on the other hand, order does not matter, okay? So this is when you rearrange a subset or rearrange the members in a group and you really have the same group. So you have the words group, committee, set, or sample. All of these are clues that you are doing a probability combination problem. All right, so let's try some of these. 
Go ahead and hit pause again and see if you can determine. All I'm asking you to do is tell me if it's a permutation or a combination. How many four digit numbers are possible if no digits are repeated? Well, again, putting numbers in different orders creates a different numerical value. So this is definitely a permutation. A sample of three light bulbs is randomly selected from a batch of 15. So you have three light bulbs in this sample that you're going to test. If you move them around in your sample kit, it does not give you a different sample, right? And that is one of our clue words, sample. So this is a combination. <clears throat> in a basketball conference with eight teams, how many games must be played so that each team plays every other team exactly once? Hmm. So ask yourself, when you get stuck on these problems, Give yourself an example, all right? So, um, is the game Dallas playing Miami different than Miami playing Dallas? No, of course it's not. It's the same game, we just put the team names in different order. So, um, in this case, order doesn't matter, this is another combination. In how many ways can four patients be assigned to six hospital rooms so that each patient has a private room? Well, notice if you had rooms one, two, three, four, five, six, and you put the people in different order, one through six, then you're going to have people in a different room. So this is a permutation because a different order puts a body in a different room. All right. So now let's look at some problems and you have to figure out whether this is a permutation or a combination. A manager must select four employees for promotion. 12 employees are eligible. In how many ways can the four employees be chosen? So try this problem and go ahead and do part B too. Hit pause and see if you can do these. Well, since everyone's getting a promotion, there's nothing different about the promotion. Um, Selecting again four out of 12 people, um, any four, they're all going to get the promotion. There's nothing different, so order doesn't matter. So this is going to be a combination. Oops. Dang on it. <clears throat> if they're going to be placed, however, in four different jobs, then the order matters. For example, if I have accounting, um, marketing, HR, and training, and I put the people in a different order, then the first person gets accounting, but it, when they're not the first person, another first person would get the accounting. So the order, because they're different jobs now, the four people are each going to a different thing, then this becomes, part B becomes a permutation. All right, let's look at example 16. Powerball is a lottery game played in 43 states. For a $2 ticket, a player selects five different numbers from 1 to 59 and one Powerball number from 1 to 35, which may be the same as, the, as one of the first five chosen. A match of all six numbers wins the jackpot. How many different selections are possible? Okay, so really we're choosing two things here. Okay, in this problem we're going to use the multiplication principle and we're going to use combinations and permutations. Now, when you look at your lottery ticket, if you have um, the matching numbers, it doesn't matter the order they're in. If you had one, two, three, four, five, six, and those were the winning numbers, it doesn't matter if your ticket said two, three, six, five, one, or whatever. Okay, so order doesn't matter, so this is a combination. Well, first we pick a, power, a Powerball. So that's our first choice from the multiplication principle. And we have 35 different ways to choose the Powerball. And then we choose the five different numbers. And we have 59 different ways to pick five numbers. So this is a combination of 59 things taken five at a time. And so we get this formula here, the combination of 59 things taken five at a time that's picking your five numbers, and then 35 is picking your Powerball number. So you can see that the problems get a little bit complicated, and you have to be thinking about what makes sense. And so, um, you know, you can also use, as I said, the hangman, where you would put six slashes, you're picking six numbers, the first one being the Powerball, you would have 35. The second one, 
you're picking from 59 numbers, so you'd have 59 times 58 times 57 times 56 times 55, okay? And you can see with just this lotto, there are 175 million different combinations, and that's why it's so damn hard to win that jackpot. So again, pay close attention to this problem, example 16, because it shows you that while it's easy to put it in your calculator, once you've got it to the combination or permutation, all of these problems aren't quite so simple. This one involved combinations and the multiplication principle, because you were picking two things. You were picking a Powerball and then five other numbers from 59. A male student going on spring break at Daytona Beach has eight tank tops and 12 pair of shorts. He decides he will need five tank tops and six pair of shorts for the trip. How many ways can he choose the tank tops and shorts? Again, we have a multiplication problem, right? Principal problem, because we're choosing tank tops and shorts. Again, we also have a combination or permutation problem because we're picking five tanks out of eight and six shorts out of 12. So we have to think about that. All right, first of all, let's figure out, is it a combination or a permutation? If I pick my red shorts and my blue shorts, and I put them in a different order, blue and red, is it a different set of shorts that I'm taking with me? No. So order doesn't matter, so this is a combination. So the ways that I can pick the tank tops is the combination of eight things taken five at a time. The way that I can pick the shorts is the combination of 12 things taken six at a time. And then of course, I multiply both of those through. There's the number of ways to pick the tank tops. There's the number of ways to pick the shorts. And of course, using the multiplication principle, we multiply them so that we have the total number of different combinations. Finally, to illustrate the difference between permutations and combinations in another way, suppose two cans of soup are to be selected from four cans on a shelf, noodle, bean, mushroom, and tomato. <clears throat> As shown in 910A, there are 12 different ways to pick them if order matters. If order doesn't matter, there's only six ways to pick them, okay? I hope this illustrated that a little bit. We can have every combination here in permutation because order doesn't matter, order does matter, excuse me, sorry about that, that's an arrangement. But if I'm picking um, three to go into my shopping cart, it doesn't matter, right? If I pick bean, noodle, and mushroom, it doesn't matter if I say I have mushroom, bean, and noodle, they're still the same ones in my cart, okay? If I'm putting them on a shelf, how I arrange them, it does matter because it looks different. If I'm putting them in my cart, um, order doesn't matter, and so I have less different choices. All right, I know this was a little bit complicated. It took a little bit long. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the pause, and um, reach out if you need any help. It should also be stressed that not all counting problems lend themselves to either permutation or combinations. This, remember that's when you take a group of things and you take a subset of them, a, a 